My name is Megan Ross and I'm studying a Bachelor of Psychology at Monash University. I was on the VC on or off psychology and today we're going to go through the structure of neurons. So this here is what we call a motor neuron. Now this is the only neuron in the study design that you need to know the structure of. Now this is rote learning so you do need to learn these definitions. You also need to know where they appear on the neuron and also how they are related to the neural impulse. So to start off with we're going to start off with these spiny projections that we can see here. So these are what we call dendrites. So these receive information from other cells. So for instance, we'd have another cell here and it had received the message in the form of neurotransmitters, which we know are our chemical messengers, and it had traveled down the dendrite to this part here. Now this is what we call the soma. So this is the cell body which integrates all of the information from the dendrites. Now, as you can see, we have quite a few dendrites. So there'd be quite a few different connections to different um, neurons and would be quite a few different messengers. So the soma here helps us to integrate all of this and make one cohesive message to send down the rest of the neuron. Now, if we look at the circle here in the middle, this is what we call the nucleus. So this contains the genetic information and helps to keep the neuron alive and functioning. Now, I've got a simplified diagram of this bit here just to help you show what it looks like. So as you can see, we have a tube going down the middle and then we can see that these circles encapsulate it. So this is what it's wrapped in. So we can see we have one long tube and then it is wrapped in something. So that one long tube is what we call the axon. So this carries neurotransmissions, also known as action potentials, away from the cell body. So the action potential is the message that's going down the neuron. It refers to the change in electrical potential. Don't worry about it too much. We don't need the really nitty gritty details about it. So what it is wrapped in, so these pink bits, is called the myelin sheets. Now in this diagram they are pink, but typically it is a white fatty substance and this helps to insulate the neuron and helps to increase the speed of neurotransmission. Also in the brain, a lot of these neurons are very tightly packed and very close together. So the myelin sheath helps uh, to keep the signal to itself and not get mixed up with the one next to it. But it also helps to um, decrease signal loss, speed up the signal, yada yada. And then moving down, so the signal goes down the axon by the help of the myelin sheath and reaches this bit here. Now this is what we call axon terminals, also known as terminal buttons. Either will be accepted on the exam. Perfectly fine. So these secrete neurotransmitters made by the neuron and carries a chemical messenger to the next neuron or cell. So we'd have another cell here. It'd release its message, travel across the synaptic gap, and then tell the next one what it wants it to do. Now let's look at this in a bit more context. So to start off here, so this would be the presynaptic neuron and this would be the postsynaptic neuron. So the axon terminal would secrete the neurotransmitter. It'd get absorbed by the postsynaptic dendrite. It'd go down into the soma travel down the axon by the help of the myelin sheath, down to the axon terminals where more neurotransmitter would be released. So this one is now the presynaptic neuron and this one the postsynaptic. It would travel across the synaptic gap and then the message would be relayed again. Now to remember that presynaptic and postsynaptic neurons are relative, so this one would be pre and then post and then pre and then post. Now hopefully this has helped you understand how um, neurotransmission works as well as the different parts on this neuron.